All right, well, we've got the, uh, the gills marked now. And we're ready to start with the three steps to, to get the, the scales on. The first step, of course, is to put the lateral line on. So I have a piece of tape and I'm going to stick it where I think the lateral line should go. Generally centered. You can have a, a, a slight bend to it as, 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 as well. Lots of fish have slightly bent lateral lines. And then what you do is you uh, use the uh, razor knife, the one that's got the tip rounded over. And you line it up just this side of the gills. And you press down firmly. You're not trying to cut it, you're just trying to mark it. Okay, there's your lateral line. So now I get out my cardboard ruler and I'm going to make the first mark pretty much over the shoulder. Uh, this is too flat, this is too vertical. Right about here. Now, that, I've measured that. That happens to be uh, 23 degrees off of the vertical. So if this is the, the vertical, it's 23 degrees. So you make your first indentation. And that's what it kind of looks like. And uh, you can see here from the sample, we've done all of these along here for a part way down. Normally I would do all the way to the tail, turn it around and then do the rest and be very careful about not going over the gills. I'm, I'm gonna do one of two things with these gills. I'm either gonna cut them out and then use oil-based paint in there, tape it off, or I might in fact spray it, so I'm, I'm not quite sure which. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these cross lines here. Now that's when the uh, little diamonds start to show in scales. So the idea here is you put in your opposite angle impressions and you join them where the lateral line crosses that other angle line. So that's why I was saying that this is potentially difficult for people that are visually challenged, especially with these really tiny scales. You've got to use your light that's above you and turn your head to make sure that you've got this right. So let's do the first few. And I will show you the result. You can see the little diamonds that are forming here, and those are in fact the scales. So you'll do that up and down, and then it will look like this. You have the nice little diamonds all up and down the back and 
simulated rims, ribs along the uh, bottom. So this is what you're looking for. So when you when you paint that, the uh, translucent paint will cover the scales, but they'll shine through. And what what happens is, uh, with several coats of epoxy, the light shines through. Uh, and, and bounces back and it kind of glows actually so it's uh, it's real nice and of course you can also not cover it up with paint and kind of have this effect so you can you can have pretty much whatever you like so to get ready for the mirror coat we need to start with a high gloss black background for the mirror coat to sit on. So what we do is we take our nice white hooks and we paint it black. For the uh, mirror finish, the first thing you need to do is paint the lures black and uh, ultimately they need to be uh, gloss black. So what you have to do, the black that I painted was not gloss. So what you do is you coat it with two part epoxy that is high gloss. Now that turns the um, non high gloss black into a, a gloss black and the mirror coating will attach to the uh, the high gloss two part epoxy We're back here and all of the lures have had their specific coatings. You can see this uh, beautiful mirror finish. And then we have our probably more traditional aluminum tape with the uh, scales uh, impressed in there. So it, it really is time for the rubber to meet the road and we have to decide on some colors. So just a reminder of what we saw throughout our series here. This has got a black back, it's got a purple side and a blue. So this is actually a three color. This one here is also a three color. It's got a yellow bottom, a, a mid dark green stripe along the side here and then a dark back. This is probably one of the simplest of all of the lures and it's um, it's not a bad lure either because it's got just a, a black back on it so it's got really only a single color. So one of the colors that uh, Wahoo really like is a couple colors. There's green, kind of like that. There's also red. Here's another hook with the same red. And uh, surprisingly, when I was catching Wahoo, this kind of gold was, ex was catching four or five times more Wahoo than any other color. So I'm gonna have to do one of these and um, I, th I think I have to be uh, aware that the, uh, the floaters will probably be for tuna and the sinkers will probably be for Wahoo. So this should go on a, one of these heavy hooks. Maybe even this one, this is the heavy one. Because that'll go down for Wahoo. So, red. Kind of gold color. And green. So, the next time you see me, I'll be um, in my paint shop. 
and I'll be putting on some color and I will have already put sealer sealer coat on all of these lures. So I've got one of the uh, floaters in front of me which I'm going to start to uh, airbrush right away. Now my plan is to put a blue stripe along the back and then have a very very deep blue back itself. So I'm, I'm trying to leave a small lighter blue stripe. So the first paint I'm going to be using is a um, Kratex Ultramarine Blue. Now like always we will put um, some paint on, very thin, heat it with a, with a hot air gun and to get the necessary density of the paint we might have to do that about a half a dozen times so um, let's try a couple I'll, I'll show you how I start and then I'll show you some uh, some uh, pictures about how I'm progressing now one of the things you're going to need is your favorite piece of cardboard because that's certainly going to uh, keep the edge of that uh, blue stripe well defined I wouldn't want to use tape I don't want a sharp edge but I also don't want it to kind of blend too much into the rest of the silver lure because I want to keep a lot of that silver. So here we go. Very light first coating and of course the hot air gun. For the remainder of this uh, blue stripe, I'm um, I'm not going to show you the the uh, the air drying. I'll just uh, speed up the, the the video. Basically, show putting that blue stripe on. So this is as dark a blue as I can possibly get. You'll see from the color itself, it's not near as dark as the the color in the in the container. But when you when you put color on top of a, a silvery backing like the aluminum foil, it lightens it up. So the nice thing about uh, putting on these transparent layers is you can keep going until you think you're done, and um, there's, there's really no harm in putting extra layers, even if they don't darken it. Uh, at some point in time, you actually discover that uh, you're done. So there's no harm done. So I'm going to uh, do the back side. And uh, I'll do it off camera, because it's uh, just uh, identical to this side. And then um, after that, I'll come back and we'll put on the, the back, the top, along here. I'm still debating what color to put there. I, I've got a choice of a... Uh, a jet black back or possibly a, um, a dark admiral blue it's a very very dark blue so I'm kind of leaning towards the admiral blue so I've decided that I'm going to use the uh, ad admiral blue it's, um, it's an apple barrel paint I don't think it's a, a fancy airbrush paint but uh, I've used it in the past it's worked really really well and I like the color it's going to be slightly darker than the uh, Supermarine Blue. So let's, uh, let's start and see what we can do. I'm going to try and keep it right on the edge of the aluminum foil.
this side is pretty much done. The, uh, the two blues are not horribly dissimilar. I'm not sure if the camera can show the subtle color changes between the, uh, the dark Admiral Blue on the back and the, and the somewhat lighter Ultramarine Blue. But uh, I'm going to do the, the other side now and then uh, after that we'll uh, let it dry and uh, then we'll uh, pop in a couple of eyes. So the uh, paint is now dried and we're getting ready to put in the eyes. So these are the eyes I'm going to use. They're uh, made by Living Eyes. They're very, very nice eyes. And this one, the color of the eyes is called Ice, which is really kind of the silver with a black center. First thing I like to do is take an eye off, the little plastic cart that it comes on, put it into the eye socket, make sure it fits. And uh, sometimes paint can build up and it, it, it can get, uh, it doesn't fit very well. You might even have to go back and, and use your Forstner bit and clean it out. So it looks like it's fitting pretty good. Got a nice bulge to it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so now I'm gonna get ready to actually glue it in. Now, I have a bit of a, a warning for you. Um, I've, I've taped this video, this exact same video, once before and I did it with this lure, which was uh, a mid-green uh, stripe with a dark green background. And to my surprise, when I glued in the eyes, the one on, the, uh, on this side expanded so much, it actually popped the eye out. Now I've done a lot of gluing of eyes. i never seen such a thing. Okay, so I started looking around for the cause. So remember how I was always uh, excited about Gorilla stuff? I noticed uh, that I opened a package with a slightly different color. These, uh, these things were a slightly different color than the, than the ones I've been using previously. Now that I look at them, this happens to be an expanding kind. It says expanding three times. So don't use the expanding kind. That is a, that is a good way to ruin uh, gluing in your eyes. So what I did is I went back and I got what I consider to be the older style of the Gorilla Glue because it was the only one they had, so I didn't have a choice. And now I'm in a situation where I can, uh, I can glue in the eyes and not have to concern myself about the glue itself expanding. So, having said all that, pretty simple. You put a little bit of glue in. Cover this up immediately, of course, because it wants to dry out real quick. Now, one of the things about this eye, this eye has a little point to it. I don't know if you can see that. That point has got to go forward. So when you're installing the eye, you got to make sure that you put that forward. Okay, and we go. Sorry, my hands might be covering up. Okay, so that eye is not quite right, so I have to move it around a little bit. And I just do that with the tip of the scalpel. All right. A bit of a push. Sometimes these actually snap in. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, you can see the bulge which is great. And then I'm gonna wait probably 25 minutes, 30 minutes, go do some other stuff. And uh, then I'll come back, put in the other eye. And then it's time for the epoxy. So this is a kind of a, a wow moment that I mentioned. This is the first wow moment. The, the, the lure just looks wonderful now that you've got the, uh, the eye in. It's a, it's a real, step forward now. So 
So the next wow moment will be the epoxy, the high gloss epoxy, because right now the paint looks rather um, dull because it's a, it's a matte finish. So anyway, we'll get back to you uh, next time you see this. We'll be putting on some epoxy.